and you accept Him, and you receive Him, your life will be changed. How many knows there's a transformation that takes place in the hearts and the lives of those that really give their self unto the Lord? And I saw people coming forth or being raised up in the earth that's going to give their selves unto the Lord. Hallelujah! God is moving by His Spirit. Moving by His great and magnificent and mighty power. He's moving. How many of those He is? And everywhere we go, since we've been traveling around in several different states here lately, and went over into Canada, and that revival over there, I'm seeing a hunger inside of a people like I hadn't seen since I first got converted. I remember when I first got converted, there was a great move of God that was going on back in about the middle of the 60s and 64 and 65 and all the way up into 69 and up in the early 70s. There was something that was taking place. People was hungry for God. I said they was hungry for God. You know why? Because God began to move upon people and they began to seek the Lord in spirit and in truth. And there was a transformation that began to take place in the lives of the hungry. Hallelujah. And when God gives a hold of you just right, you'll be changed. How many of you will? You'll become different from what you were when you surrender yourself unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God spoke to me the other day and he said every transformation that there's ever been, he said there's always been results of it. He said there cannot be a transformation to take place in the heart and the life of an individual without it showing up later on. He said you will see the results of every transformation. He said every change that takes place. He said you will see the results of it. Hallelujah. After a while. Have it please you will. Well, folks, think that the Lord just saves you to sit down on a bench and never say amen. To never say hallelujah. To never say glory to God. Folks think that God's going to save you and just go somewhere and get in a corner somewhere or another. Be afraid to say amen or raise your hands or clap your hands or get up and run up and down the aisle. God ain't saved you to be quiet. How many knows that God ain't saving you to sit around? Hallelujah. But when God gets a hold of you and saves you and when you truly get converted and you're truly being changed, I want you to know the world's going to know about it. Everybody's going to know about it when you get a real taste of this word and start living by this word and abiding by this word. I mean, knows that everybody be able to see the results of that transformation that took place in your life. Let me say, man. And he told me, he said, that's what I'm doing. He said, God told me in October and November and December, he said, there's coming forth a transformation of all transformations. He said, I'm thinking to transformate my people into a place of holiness, into a place of righteousness. And he said, it's going to begin to show off and show up. Hallelujah. You're going to see it come to pass when you see the year 1981 roll up on your calendar you're going to see the results of this transformation that's taking place in October and November and December and I say man glory to Jesus and he said everywhere there's a transformation a true transformation he said the results will follow hallelujah I said hallelujah. How many knows he'll make you to be something other you ain't never been before? Hallelujah. And the Bible gives us references of those that was changed. How many knows that's right? The Bible is a reference book that you can go to. How many knows it's the truth? 
hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't know exactly what I need to do and what and how I need to live. Well, only say we got to do is pray and seek God. There's a lot of things that don't none of us know yet. We see through a glass darkly, but one of these days, face to face, we know in part now, but after a while, we're going to know, even as he is known, we shall be known. And it's shame in the God. Glory to Jesus. God's bringing forth the people in holiness. God's bringing forth the people in true righteousness. And it do you well to testify and witness everywhere you go. The tell the Lord there's a transformation. There's a change that's taking place in the hearts and the lives of the children of God. And it is. And you're going to see the results. We're not laboring in vain here. Well, I had a vision of that when I first come here. That this work is not in vain. This work ain't been built up overnight. That's how come it ain't going to fall overnight. It ain't going to fall at all. This work will never fail. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, this church will always be. Hallelujah to God. I said glory. People, one thing caused this church to fail, and that's mind your slackness, and mind your shortness, and mind your slowfulness, and mind your unconcernness. That's all this reason this church could ever fail. And if the church fell to the ground, the word of God's going to stand if all the churches go down. I believe the whole world burns up. God's word is going to still stand. And it's saying that. Oh, yes, it is. You're going to see the results of that that God's are doing, that God's are bringing forth. Thanks to God, I saw that God's fixing to open up heavenly things to us. If you'll believe it, it'll be so unto you. God told me the other day, said, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to open up the windows of heaven. If they ain't been opened up like we need to get them opened up, there's been a little crack in it a little bit, but I want them windows to swing open wide. I want the windows of heaven open up, and God's getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and pour me you out heavenly things. We're fixing a taste of heavenly things. Hallelujah. That the flesh will be able within itself to utter that. Uh, that God's going to do for his children. Uh, it's going to be the results uh, of this great transformation uh, that's taking place. Uh, of I say, man, uh, go ahead and clap your hands uh, unto the Lord. Praise God. Don't you feel the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. And it's not going to be just here. It's not just going to be over yonder. But it's going to be all over. I saw a restoration and a returning unto wholeness. Somebody said, you sure are using wholeness a lot. I'm going to use it more than that. You will hear me holler wholeness right behind Jesus. I'm going to holler Jesus more than anything else. I'm going to holler Jesus wholeness. Jesus wholeness. Holy, holy God, holy Jesus, holy one, holy child, hallelujah, I said glory to God, it's time for me and you to get in the holiness all the way, it's time that me and you be transformed, how many knows that's right, hallelujah, in the place God's bringing forth the real people, you can say what you will, but God's bringing forth the determined people, that's got a zeal and determination, that's out of this world, I said out of this world, we will not take no for an answer but we will endure to the end we shall recover in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth am I saying man glory to God that's right we don't take no for an answer and I saw the walls begin to crumble by the power of God I saw the fastings the dedications the consecration unto God was going to break down the middle wall. Hallelujah. Just like I got in the part of that mess, that magazine, God told me, he said, I'm fixing to let my people penetrate into my glory. He said, like a wall was there, 
God. But he said, you're going to penetrate through into my holiness. Hallelujah, the heavenly things. And I saw God fixing a move. Some of you fixing to get a visitation of the Lord. If you pray and get a hold of God, God's going to visit you in dreams and visions. And I would be surprised if God don't start speaking by an the voice. He told me one day, a few months ago, he said, the day shall come that there shall come forth a voice out of heaven. He said, I'm going to speak out of heaven. And I said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice from heaven. That's right. God's getting the people ready. And you're going to bring them forward. Yes, he is. You better believe it. Men of God, like Brother James Cleveland. Hallelujah. Somebody that's dedicated to God. Somebody's got one thing in mind, that's doing the will of God. Hallelujah. Somebody ain't concerned about their self, but they're crucifying their flesh. Somebody like Hubert Island. Hallelujah. God is willing to go and pray and fast as long as God says fast. Ain't going to come off of it until God moves. Hallelujah. I said God's praying for the determined people. We're going to get a hold of the Lord, and we're not going to turn him loose. And then he hears and answers, uh, mind your prayers. Uh, and I say, man, uh, and your sons and your daughters and your husband and your wives, your mamas and your daddies and your grandchildren is going to come into God's kingdom. I said, Karoka Yalabu Hussein. I said, if it's going to come in to the kingdom of God, God's raising up something of the fresh. Yes, he is. God's bringing forth something just as fresh as it can be. Somebody is going to do one thing, and that's going to be sold out to live for Jesus. Sold out to do His will. Hallelujah. That's God. You ain't going to be the same. If you'll do these fasts like the Lord spoke to you fast, and you hang in there, I don't care how much the devil tries to offer you some, some fish sticks or french fries or breaded veal or chicken legs. God told me the other day, in fact, he told me again today, he said, they ain't got no kind of foods more important than what you're getting. He said, I'm going to give you something else that ain't made of food. Hallelujah to God. I said, Hallelujah to God. Everybody said, Well, I have a hungry pain every once in a while. Well, I go ahead and let it come. I said, Let the hungry pains come. Bless God, you got to make your mind up. God's transforming the people. There's a transformation. God's bringing you from the flesh and bringing you over into His glory. Bring you over into His spirit. Bring you over into His power. Bring you over into His authority. Bring you over into His mind. Bring you on his wheel and you'll see the results of it. If you got the bonus and the courage and the backbone to do it, God will move for you. God's bringing for us some steadfastness and he's saying, Man, glory to Jesus. Shall I say, Man? And the devil's what tells you you can't do it. Yeah, you can do it. We are going to do it. We will do it. We shall do it. We are doing it. We are doing it. Amen to God. How many knows what I'm talking about? And he told me, he said, you'll see the results of three months of transformation. There's going to be three months. It started the first day of October. God told me months ago, he says, starting in October, the 1st of October, he said, they fixing to come something other forth. Hallelujah. If you want to get somewhere in God, now's the time for you to dedicate yourself. I said, now's the time for you to get in with everything you got. That you might be one of those that's in this great transforming. Hallelujah. For three months, God's fixing to make and mold me and you and bring us forth. I preach that mess about the potter's clay in that right. Hallelujah. I want you to know one thing. Me and you are in the mold of God right now. We're in God's mold. And however you come out of God's mold, it's going to depend on you. It's going to depend upon you. 
Shall I say, help us, Lord? You'll see the results of the transformation. You'll see the results of this church, too. I guarantee you will. Glory to the Lamb of God. This God we right before come in, the greatest thing we ever come into. Somebody look around and see an empty seat or two and say, well, why not? Well, bless God, that's why I'm seeking God. If there's anything in a way, why not? It should be like he said it shall be. I'm going to find out what it is. And if it's in my life, I'm going to get it out. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. How many knows when you pay the price, then you can say something to But until you pay the price, you ain't got no right to open your mouth unless you pay the price. And that's exactly exactly what God's children is going to do. They're going to pay the price to go through that transformation and you'll see the results of those that pays the price of I say man. Glory to Jesus. And don't nobody tell me that God can't change you. Listen to what he done for the apostle Peter. God told me just like this. He said this is a result of the transformation of the Apostle Peter. He said, I brought him from a hot-headed, lying, cursing fisherman. And I transformed him into a meek and lowly, compassionate apostle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he said, that's the results of his transformation. And how many knows this is the truth? How I many knows that Peter was hot-headed? How I many knows he had a quick temper? He was always flying off the handle. Yes, he was. And he also used foul language. How I many knows he did? How I many knows the Bible spoke about when Peter was a cussing? Amen. So he was transformed. The results of the transformation of Peter was from a hot-headed, lying, cursing fisherman. He became a meek and a lowly, compassionate apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God can and will do the same thing for you that he did for him. If you're willing to pay the price, it shall be yours. How many knows it shall be yours? Oh, yes, it shall. Glory to Jesus. Amen to God. But you ain't going to get nowhere going somewhere and ordering you a glass of water, a cup of coffee, and looking through the menu and reading everything on the menu. Amen. God blesses you. says, Arthur, you get you a, a glass of water or a cup of coffee. Amen. Well, you just go ahead and say, I don't need no menu. Hallelujah. God's going to give us victory, we say. And I'll tell you one thing, and the devil ain't going to tell us how big we are, how small we are. I ain't going to worry about it. Hallelujah to God. I remember when I weighed about 140 something pounds and God spoke to me going a 30 day fast and the devil tried to scare me half to death. I said, here I was six foot and two inches tall, weighed about 143 pounds. You hear me? The devil said, you'll die just as sure as you're living now. So you'll never make it. I said, you'll die. There ain't no way. It's impossible. It's totally impossible to fast for 30 days. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I found me a place to pray. And every day I'd find me a place to get a hold of God. I'd look in the mirror. Well, we're human beings. How many of us were human beings? I wasn't as big as a big bar of soap to start with. Hallelujah. I looked like a real fence. But I said, God, I'll get down to 100 pounds. If it takes me to get down to 100 pounds, God, if they have to tote me in, if they have to lead me to the pulpit and lead me away from the pulpit. I said, I'll do what you said. And I held on to God. And I got down a little better than 120 pounds. But I want you to know one thing. God gave me something that ain't no amount of fruit could ever produce for me. God gave me something that in 1970 is candy and ladies. Hallelujah. And I said, praise God. God's going to give me you something other. In the year 1980, that's going to be like a launching pad over the next decade. That's right. We're headed into it. We, this is 80, but really 81 is so really starts in it. Hallelujah. This is the last of the 70s. I mean, even though it says 80, this is the last of the 70s. Really, 81 is the first year. 
And we're going to have something to launch on over into 1981. God's going to work signs and wonders and miracles and deliverance. There's a healing deliverance ministry. You've been hearing me talk about it for months now. That's right, there's a deliverance ministry coming forward. There's a healing ministry coming forward. And when I was in Alabama last night, God spoke to me while I was preaching. And he said, I'm going to bring forth a deliverance ministry. He came, told me some great men of God that had deliverance ministers in the past. Uh, hallelujah, that's not on the field now for one reason or another. He called over a couple of well-loaded evangelists that had a deliverance ministry. And he said, this ain't nothing. He said, what I'm fixing to bring forth. He said, the ministry of deliverance that they had. He said, this ain't nothing. I'm bad to what I'm going to do before Jesus returns. And I believe it to be so. I said, I believe it to be so. And he said, help me, Lord. Amen. Somebody said, who's going to be ahead of it? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself is going to be ahead of it. And then you're going to be following his steps. I said, man, you're going to be following his steps. Hallelujah, God. And all of the children of God that will dedicate their cells. I told them this in, in St. Landry. To dedicate their cells in these three months. And I told them down yonder in Alabama to dedicate their cells these three months. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you're going to see the results of the transformation. I said, there's the result coming forth of the transformation. Somebody say, praise God. If you'll believe me, you'll see it. You ain't going to receive nothing if you don't believe it. you got to believe it. How many knows you got to believe it? And one thing about it, bless God, me for one, I'm not going to tell you to do something other and not set the example before you. That's one thing about it. How many knows it's easy to say things, but another thing is doing that you say. If I tell you to do something other, you're going to find me right out there doing it with you. Hallelujah. If you sacrifice, I'll sacrifice more. Not trying to be more than you, but leadership has to go a little deeper. How knows it does? I wouldn't ask you to do something other than I wouldn't set the example. I never have. I never have done it. Hey Amen. Man, the soul of this church, and I say this in humbleness, is fasted any longer at one time than what God had me to fast. So you say, I hadn't asked you to fast longer than I fasted. I'm talking about it one time. Who knows what I'm talking about? But that was last year. That was all well and good. That was good for last year, but this is this year. I said, this is for this year. God told me, he said, folks think they're going to get by with doing what they've done last year. He said, they're not going to do it. You might as well get ready to pay the price if you're going to be among the, the transformed, among those that's going through this great transformation. You might as well get ready to pay the price. And when the devil tells you you can't do it, you tell the devil he's a liar and the father of lies. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And then you got Jesus living on the inside of us. I know that's right. Hallelujah. We're going to make it. I might have to come over to your house and hold up your hands. And you might have to come the next day and hold mine up. Then the next day we'll not have to come to your house and get you to hold both our hands up. But we're going to make it. How many knows we're going to make it? One way or another, we're going to make it. Amen? Yeah, we're going to make it. Praise God. So he said in St. Luke 22, verses 31 and 32, I'm talking about Peter from a hot-headed, lying, cursing fisherman. He was transformed. Hallelujah. St. Luke 22, 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift his wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Hallelujah. And he held on to God. He made his mistake, but he got straightened back out. How many knows he did? And this is the results of that transformation. In Acts chapter 5, verse 15, I'm going to give you time to get over. I want you to hear the results of the transformation of this hot-headed, cursing, lying fisherman. God will change your life. God will change your life. How many knows he will? Now here's what happened 
after he received Jesus Christ. He told him, Jesus told him, said, Satan is desired to have you that he might sift his wheat. But he said, I prayed for you. Can you imagine the Lord praying for you? I had never really thought about that much until just now, but Jesus said, I prayed for you. Amen. God, we got some. He's an intercessor for us too, ain't he? That's right. He is the intercessor. There ain't no way that you can get to God except going through Jesus Christ. He's mine. You're a mediator and intercessor. Yes, he is. Acts 5 and 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. What a result. That's a result of a transformation. You know God have to give me something like this. I ain't that high up no thing to get messages like this. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It'll take God for me to come out here and preach a message about predestination and transformation and impartation, all these big words. I mean, does it takes God to move upon a man to declare the word of God like this? But he told me the other day, he said there's coming forth a transformation. He said, I'm fixing to bring my people into something. Else. I'm fixing to deliver them from the nightclubs and the beer joints and the honky tonks. Hallelujah to God. I want to try transform them and make them meek and lowly and compassionate and they're going to love to do my will and I say praise God God can change you how many of he can change you I wouldn't worth nothing to myself and nobody else until God got a hold of me just right and I got a hold of him It's one thing for God to get a hold of you. It's another thing for you to get a hold of God. And when God gets a hold of you, it's time to get a hold of Him. How many knows that's right? God will move. God will help you. God will help every one of me and you. And there's not a one of us in here that don't need some help from God. That's right. Every one of me and you needs to get on up and move on up a little closer to God. That's exactly what we're doing too. They ain't seen nothing yet. I said, folks, they ain't seen nothing yet. I saw, I put on the wall, the, the best is yet to come. And I still say it is. There's a result coming for it of this great transformation. This year, fast is going to change your life. It's going to give you something that you ain't never had before. That's right. It's going to change you. It's going to make something out of you you ain't never been before. Hallelujah. And you will be a fit subject for God to give dreams and visions. You'll be a fit subject for the Lord to open up and give you heavenly things when you're transformed. Glory to Jesus. And I say praise God. Amen to God. Oh, I feel like I just got up from a table with a T-bone. Amen. Praise. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen to God. We're going to be dancing for this much over. That's right. We're going to be dancing and running up and down the aisles. Hallelujah to God. I'd turn some cartwheels when you how. The Holy Ghost might teach you how to turn a cartwheel in about 12, 13 days. Amen. You won't have no weight to worry. you down, hold you back. Because God, you'll be light enough to turn wheels, won't you? Somebody say Amen. Glory to God. I said, we'll be light enough to turn wheels after about 14 to 21 days. More or less. <laughs> Praise God. So he received power. How many of he did? He didn't have nothing but a lying tongue. That's all he had. And a mouth that cursings come out of. He stayed mad half the time. Hot-headed. He lied. He cursed. He was filled up with all guile and malice and envy and hatred and backbite and everything else. Just about everything you think about was following Peter around before he became apostle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Jesus saw what was going to take place before it come. He said, I pray for you, though, that your faith will fail you not. And he said, when you're converted, he said, strengthen your brethren. I believe you're going to make it. Peter, I believe you're going to make it through the storm. I believe you're going to make it through the flood. And I pray for you that you fail you not. 
And when you are truly converted, when you have completely been transformed, is what he was saying. When you have been completely transformed, he said, I'll see the results of your transformation because he said you'll have something to strengthen the brethren. That's exactly what he meant. He said, I said, that's exactly what he meant. When you are converted or transformed, the results of your transformation or your conversion is going to show up and they're going to have so much power. You are going to have so much power. Hallelujah. That people's going to be looking for you to come down the street and they say, if I could just get in the shadow of that line cursing hot-headed fisherman that's been transformed. I know I could be healed. And God will do it for me and you. How many believe he'll do it for me and you as sure as he'll do it for the Peter? Oh, yes, he will. I said, oh, yes, he will. But we're going to have to take it by force. And you ain't nowhere where those that's ahead of you hadn't been. There's not an individual in this building or in this city or this town is walking in any place that somebody else ain't already walked. And nobody can rightfully say, I can't do it. Because you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Hey Amen. How many believes that? If she can do it, another one can do it. If he can do it, or she can do it, or he can do it, or she can do it, another one can do it. You can do it. Oh yes, you can. You can come out of one of these churches that don't even believe in the Holy Ghost and sit in a congregation of holy folks. If one can do it, another can do it. Willing to be identified with holy people. Righteous people. Glory to Jesus! Sister Reiser, the result of a transformation... Already she's a result of a transformation that's taken place thus far, but God's got more. I said, God's got more. God just get you now where it can do something for you. That's right. God just now get you in a place where it can move for you. Hallelujah! God will bring you from a wine and dining, pretty lady or pretty playboy, and change you into a meek and a lowly and a humble person. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And when God sees that you're determined, that you believe uh, the word of God, you believe the man of God, and God sees that you mean business, uh, God will take up a cracked voice and couldn't carry a tune in a five-gallon bucket uh, and turn you into something else, uh, and you can sing like an angel, uh, and you can bless multitudes uh, by your voice. Uh, I mean, those that old business is better than sacrifice. Uh, and when God sees, uh, that means you're going to obey you, then he'll do something for us. And he believes we are. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I said, praise God. That church I was at last night, God transformed that man and moved him from a dope addict to a what you call him that sells it. I didn't know. I don't pusher. He was a dope addict. He was a pusher. A pusher. Probably a puller too. Was, he done everything he could do. Hallelujah. He was all wind up or doped up or something. The first time he came to service, it looked like his eyes were like glass shining. Hallelujah. But eight years ago, God spoke to a man of God to call him out of a congregation. And reveal his life back to him when he was six, seven years old. Carried him back about 20 years in his life. And he testified about last night. And he went, wow. Hallelujah to God. It ain't nothing that man can do. I'm talking about what God can do. God knows about you yesterday. God knows about you last week. God knows about you 10 years ago. How many knows that 20 years ago, if you 21, if you 20 years old, God knew about you 20 years ago. Oh yes, he did. And if God's got some holy vessels and holy men of God, and the spirit speaks through them, God can carry them back in the spirit. I'll bring the past up. And let them see it. How I many knows ain't nothing here from the all seeing eye of God? There's nothing here. And everything is right now with God. God changed him from a dope addict and a sock and a pusher. 
into a meek and a lowly and a calm, compassionate pastor of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's got a humble spirit. Hallelujah. And eight years from the time he got converted, soon after that, he began to preach. He'd been preaching about seven to eight years. And he's coming over here and going to preach to us for three nights pretty soon. Somebody say amen. Praise God. I said praise God. And you'll see the result of that transformation that took place in this man's life. When he takes his microphone and stands before you, you're going to know that he's been with Jesus. You can tell when somebody has been with Jesus. How many of those have to acknowledge of the apostles that they've been with Jesus? Amen. That's what the scripture says, that they took knowledge of them, that they'd been with Jesus, that they'd been with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. And there was a legion filled up with the devil. Had so many devils in him, they had to give the names of devils. That's right, I couldn't call them. It's just so many names, they didn't want to call them all, all by their names. They just put them all together and call them legion. Which means many. He has so many demons in him, they call him many demons. Come here, many demon. Legion, many demon, come here. Hey, Amen. How many knows he was wild? Oh, yeah, he was wild. Legion was the results of a transformation from a furious, wild, demon possessed maniac. That's what he was. He was a fierce, wild, demon-possessed maniac. But when he came in the presence of the Lord, he became a quiet, settled-down, peaceful child of God, clothed and in his right mind. Hallelujah. God will transform you from a fierce, demon-possessed maniac into something that is meek and lowly as a lamb itself. How may believe see we are. That was the results of his transformation. Hallelujah. Jesus commanded him demons to come out of him. He called him. He said, come out. Hallelujah. And sent him into 2,000 pigs. They're swines. And he had so many demons in him, I think every pig or every hog. Well, he did. They all went crazy. They all run off the cliff and drowned and choked to death in the water. There's at least one demon went in every hog. Because every one of them went as nutty as a fruitcake. Blah! And run off and blind as a bat. And went head on off the cliff. How many knows the Bible said they choked to death in the water? It said about 2,000 of them. Hallelujah. Lord God. There's a lot of demons, a lot of folks now, but I hope I don't come across one that's got 2,000. If I do, I'm going to be hollering Jesus. That'd be just as soon as I find out about it. Those God, I'm going to be hollering Jesus. And I'm going to go ahead and be honest about it. I'll probably run the opposite direction until Jesus says stop and turn around. If I come across one that's got 2,000 demons in it. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Blessed be the name of the Lord. Maniacs over at one time command them to come out in the name of Jesus. How many knows it was? Command them to come out. They said, Jesus we know. And Paul we know. They said, Who are you? And them demons tore their clothes off of them. Left them just as naked as a jaybird, you'll have it. And he went running down the road naked. It's the Bible, ain't it? I made up. It's the Word of God. How close it is. The Bible said he stripped the clothes off of him. And he was seven of them. And he went running off down the road naked according to the Word of God. Hallelujah. That mean you don't have to run off. I'm going to say, give us that we need. That's why I'm going to take my place and be in this great transformation. Because we come face to face. Even if it's a legion of demons. He said you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he believes in the truth. Hallelujah. And there's a double portion power. It's coming forward. That's right. A double portion power. 
and how many of those that saw his name was changed to Paul hallelujah you know what he was God gave me the words to put down here to tell the people what they really were like when I said that, that Peter was a hot headed lying cursing fisherman that's what the Lord told me he was and the Bible backs it up hallelujah the Lord told me that legion was a fierce, wild, demon-possessed maniac. And that's what the Bible will back up, that he was. How many knows he was fierce? He was wild. He was demon-possessed. He was a maniac. He was crazy. Oh, yes, he was. God told me that Saul was a condemning, convicting, bloodthirsty persecutor. Can you imagine what kind of men these men were? And how they... The Lord Jesus Christ transformed them. Hallelujah. Through an act of transformation. An act of change. Hallelujah. But he was brought from a condemned, convicted, bloodthirsty persecutor. When the Lord got through with Saul, he became, he became a compassionate, tender-hearted brother and follower of Jesus Christ. Both teacher and preacher. Amen. Praise God. And listen to the word of God concerning Paul. After his name was changed to Paul from Saul in Acts 21 and 13. Acts 21 and 13. Thank you, Jesus. If God ever gave me a message, God gave me this message for you tonight. And whoever might hear it later on, it'd be good. Everyone, you needs a uh, copy of this. Everyone, you needs a copy of this to help bring you through these months ahead. That's right. This would encourage you if you just if everybody had a copy. God's able to bless you with it too. How many of you? In Acts twenty-one and thirteen, then Paul answered, "What mean ye to weep and to break my heart?" For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. You sorrow, Kayaro Bohosaya. You see what I'm talking about? A compassionate, tender hearted brother and follower of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm talking about now? Hallelujah to God. He said, he answered, what mean you to weep and to break my heart? How many of those he was tender hearted, his heart began to break? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. And how about the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria? How about her? He told me this woman of Samaria was of, a, of an unsavory, unholy. She had an unsavory, unholy reputation. But through the results of a transformation, she became an evangel of Jesus Christ. And she spoke up in St. John chapter 4 and verse 19. I'm talking about the woman of Samaria that had an unsavory, unholy reputation. Ungodly, unheard of, evil, spoke of evil enticed and evil herself. How know she was? Enticed by the devil to evil and more evil. She was full of the devil. She had an unsavory, unholy reputation, an ungodly reputation. How know she did? But there was a transformation that took place when Jesus came to where she was at. And when Jesus got through with her, how knows her life was changed. In St. John chapter 4 19, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. How many knows that Jesus told her whatsoever things that she had done in the past? Oh, yes, she did. But she recognized him as the Messiah. She recognized him as the prophet sent from God. I know she did. She recognized him as the Holy One. 
regardless of how unrighteous and ungodly and unholy she was. When Jesus got through with her, I mean, those he changed her life. And the result of her transformation was as she went into the city and she said, come in here and see a man that told me all things whatsoever I did. Is not this the Christ? Amen to God. And she became an evangel for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, glory to my hand. Slip up your hand and say, Lord, let me be transformed from my will and my way to your will and your way. And the results of your transformation is going to show up. Yes, it is. Praise God. Praise God. They a sold this building somewhere or another, no doubt, has done something or other that you're ashamed of. They probably ain't one individual in this building tonight is somewhere or another that you ain't done something that was wrong. If you didn't do no more and run your tongue, that's wrong. Hallelujah. Soroko Yahasaya. How many believe the Lord is in here? I said, I feel the Lord in here. And so, saints, go ahead and get on it. I heard a song on the radio, part of a song the other day, talking about getting on some kind of train and riding. Well, here's a train that you need to get on. This is a love train that you need to get on. How many believe that's right? If you want to get on a love train, this is the greatest love train that there ever is going to be. And you say, man. Glory to God. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw, saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Heaven knows that's right. He's going to have a whole multitude of followers. Can you say, man? They're going to be a whole train load of us. I might be saying that old song, this train is bound for glory, this train. Nothing going to ride but the rocks and holy. How I many knows that's right? Ain't nothing gonna get on this train but the righteous and the holy. Hallelujah. There ain't no gamblers gonna be on this train. So in order for me to get on this train, I had to quit my gambling. And I love to gamble. I did, I love to gamble. These two things that I love, and that was to gamble and drink beer. But God got a hold of me. God will turn your deck of cards into a prayer book. How many believes he will? I said he'll turn them into a prayer book. Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. You'll be able to stand up and tell the story that this man told about the deck of cards and the soldier one time. And I don't know all of it, but it was good anyway. He said he didn't have nothing. They, they come and ask him, the, the, the preacher or whatever over there, where, where his Bible was at. He said, I ain't got nothing but a deck of cards. He said, where's your prayer book at? He said, I ain't got one. He was in battle. And I don't know why he had a deck of cards, but he had a deck of cards. But he began to look through his deck of cards. He said, soldier, you need a prayer book. He said, well, well when I look at the ace, it reminds me there's only one God. Hallelujah. He said, that's the Lord God Jehovah. Hallelujah to God. And he said, when I look at the deuce, it reminds me that the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old and the New Testament. Glory to God. And he said, when I look at the tree, it reminds me of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. And he said, when I look at the four, it reminds me of the fourth man. He said, that was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he said, the former the fourth man was like it in the Son of God. And I say, man, go ahead and say, man, oh my God, go ahead and praise him. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he went on all the way through the deck of cars. He went on. Talk about the king. When he'd seen the king, he reminded the king of the glory. Hallelujah. You seen the jack, it reminded him of the devil himself. Looked at the jack of spades. Reminded him of the devil. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. He said there's four suits in the deck of cards. There's the hearts, the diamonds, the clubs, 
and the spades. He said it reminds me of the fourth season of the year that God created. Hallelujah, the four seasons. Somebody say, Praise God. Glory to God. He said, When I count, he said, When I count the when I count the number of cards in the deck of cards, he said it's 52 cards a deck. He said, the number of weeks in a year that God's created. And he said, when I count the spots on my deck of cards, it reminds me of 365 days. Hallelujah. Of God's creation. Teaching me to walk with God. Every day of my life to walk for God. Am I saying man? And he went on and he went on and he went on. And he was transformed. I said he was transformed. How many believes you can use what you got for the glory of God? If you got an open mind, an open heart, an open spirit, and say, Praise God. And he got on through and he said, You see, sir. He said, my deck of cards reminds me of the Bible, the almanac, and serves as my prayer book. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Of course, I ain't recommend you go out and buy a deck of cards. But he saw Jesus. That's all he had. He's about ready to get killed. So he took what he had. And he looked into it. And he saw God in his glory. He saw God in his creation. How knows that's right? You'd be surprised what God's in. God's in a few things. God can take something other and cause it. Something other that has been used for the devil. God can cause it to be transformed and changed. To be used for some for his glory. And you can see the results of the transformation. How many knows that's right? Somebody said God can't do it. If God can change somebody like Peter, if God can change somebody like Saul, if God can take a half crazy, fierce, demon possessed maniac that dwell among the tombs and cause him to be a meek and a lowly and a compassionate child of God, then God can do anything. I said God can do anything. How many believes he can? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Don't you love him tonight? Go ahead and slip your hand and say, Lord, I love you. God, I'm going to be in this transformation. That last transformation, God didn't know nothing about maybe too much. Maybe I was so young I couldn't get in that last transformation that took place back in the middle 60s and into the early 70s. But I'm going to be in this one. This is one transformation and I'm not going to turn loose because I'm going to hold on until I can behold the results of that transformation. Hallelujah. Until I can behold my change. Mind your change is going to come. How many it is? Praise God. And the word it means you need to get a hold of, a hold of is determination. Determination. You can do it. It can be done. And I've seen young children fast for 7, 14, 21 days. And if they can do it, you can do it. it depends on what you want from God. And it depends on how bad you want it. That's how come the prophet's got a minister like he's got. Because he didn't let nothing stand in between him and getting what God had for him. He knew that God had something for him that he hadn't come into and he sought God until he got it. And the Lord appeared to him. Hey Amen. Somebody said, well that's him. Yeah, and that's you and this is me. And God is still no respect a person. And I know that some's got a greater calling than others has got and all due respect to that. That's right. But God's got something other for me and you. Don't you ever think that God's put you out shut in a dry pasture, let you graze in a dry pasture where the, the grass is brown and it died up? God's going to have you graze in green fields and green pastures. How many knows this right? God told me last night, He said, I'll make every child of God's pasture green. If they'll pay the price, He said, I'll make all the pastures to be green. And I say, man, and how many knows that green represents life y'all give life to us all I can't hardly wait till it comes myself but there's going to be a lot of sacrificing before we get it 
It's going to take a lot of praying. Oh, yes, it is. But on this third day of this month, I'm telling you that it can be yours. That you can obtain it. That you can have it. And I want to ask you to pray for me right now. I'm going to ask you to help me to do that that God would have me to do. Because there ain't but one way that I can do it. And I know it. If God don't move me, if what I'm feeling, if, if it works out to be what I'm feeling, without a doubt, it'll take God out of heaven. There's only one way that I can make it. Only one way that you can make it do what you must do. And that's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, help me, Lord. But tonight, saints, let's set out to be determined. Let's be determined that we're going to do it. I said that we're going to do it. And don't you worry about what somebody tells you, try to tell you how to do this and how to do the other. When they go ahead and set you a real good example, then they can come and talk to you. But until they ain't doing nothing but bumping their gums or rattling their teeth and ain't done nothing but try to condemn you and they ain't done nothing, but don't you worry about what anybody says. Because you can't tell somebody something else if you ain't done it yourself. I believe that's right. Amen. Glory to Jesus. If you have been that example, if you have walked down that road yourself, then you say, come on. You just step where I've been standing. I've been here. Come on. But you ain't going to convince me that a person has not been there is going to tell me how to get there if they ain't been there. I had an upsetting telephone call. Monday, I guess. Or what day was it? I had an upsetting telephone call. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ain't that right, brother? Hallelujah. He knows about it. It, it, it wasn't him. It was to do with somebody else. An upsetting telephone call. Hallelujah. But he knows about it. But I got the victory over it. I said, I got the victory over it. That's right. And I went down to pick up my mail, and the devil was sitting up there in my mailbox. And I felt a demon power before he even touched the letter. Felt the demons coming straight out of the pits of hell. Right there in the Picayune post office. Don't you tell me the devil don't know about Picayune downtown. He knows all about downtown Picayune. Oh, yes, he does. And I seen who it was from. And, and somebody read just a few lines of it and told me, so you don't need to read this. It ain't nothing but upsetting a bunch of trash is all it is. Trash. Demons out of the pits of hell. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. I took it out in the, uh, on the side of the road off the premises away from my house and I got me some matches uh, and I set it on fire. I said, I sent them demon pyres back to hell. Where they come from? I said, you demon pyres, I command you to go back to the pits of hell from which you come. And I saw it burn. I said, I saw them demons on fire. And I say, man, go ahead and say praise God. And I walked away whistling oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus and I say man glory to God then the devil rang my doorbell and I got victory over that I went right on down to Alabama with the victory in my heart and I wasn't upset at all but I went down there and I preached Jesus to the hungry. I told them about the Lamb of God that taken away their sin in the world. I told them about wanting to make you love everybody. Even those who would persecute you and find fault wrong in you and cast your name out for evil. That God done giving you something of it and caused me you to love them, love them, love them. And I say praise God. That's what I'm talking about. That's a result of being transformed love praise God brother you know I ain't used to have what I'm coming into because I used to tear furniture up and I get mad amen praise God 
Glory to Jesus. I had Christ, all right, but sometimes I'd come off my handle or his handle or somebody's handle. I, God had to help me to get me here. And I still got a long ways to go. But God's going to give me and you that we need to face up against the powers out of hell. How many of he is? You'll be able to look that devil square in the eye and say, Satan, get behind me. Hallelujah, you better get behind me because I'm walking where you're standing and you are standing in my way and I'm coming through and you better get out of my way. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise God. How many knows what we're talking about? Glory to the Lamb of God. Oh, yes, God. Some of your hands and say, praise God, praise God. Oh, yes. And I saw it like a gold mine. It just been discovered. The Word of God. Finding one nugget right behind another. I'm going to be looking for a nugget every day of this fast. I'm going to be searching and looking for a nugget every day of my fast. Because I know that me and you done found us a gold mine. Hallelujah to God. Me, you done found us a field. Hallelujah. A great price. We done found a pearl of great price. Hallelujah. This is a pearl of great price that me and you've got. We done found a field. And that field is the world. And in the midst of it all, Jesus is saying, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. How many knows he is? How many knows the field is the world? Oh yeah, the field is the world. And I have sold out. Hallelujah to possess this field. Hallelujah, we're lost souls in that. And we may be a soul winner for the Lord. Hallelujah. He that win his souls is wise. God told me again last night. He said, you tell people, said, before they pray for anything else. He said, you tell them to pray to be a soul winner. He said, because that's the reason I came down here. To seek and to save that which is lost. And before me, you start praying that God let all the gifts of the Spirit take us over. Oh, that I could prophesy. Oh, that I could discern the spirits. Oh, that I could work miracles. Oh, that I could have faith. We better pray. Oh, that I could be a soul winner. Hallelujah. You want wisdom to start winning souls. Amen. And God will add all these other things unto you. When the Lord sees that you love him enough to, to go out there and tell somebody else about him, then he'll start adding, 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 and give you more and more and more and more. Hallelujah, God. And you'll be a real soul winner then. I believe you will. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you love him?